It is February and it is the love month. And what better way to celebrate that than do an episode here on the podcast centered on love and relationship. Disclaimer, I am not a love guru. So I am I have onboarded someone, invited someone, well, kind of forced him to join me here on the pod so that we can talk about several topics that I'm sure you guys are going to be interested. His name is B.I., not bad influence, but Brian Urban. Welcome to the pod, B.I. Oh, hey, hey, Jess, or otherwise known as Jessica. From <laughs> our from our childhood, I am um, absolutely honored um, to be invited in your podcast. Finally, also full disclosure, not a love guru, but let's hope that uh, people are going to be at least finding this exchange of hours entertaining, or at least they're going to be learning something uh, from them, you know, watching your episode. And I'm, again, very happy to be here. I am excited. Yes, finally, we're doing this. And we were talking about doing a podcast together because I, you know, I'm a huge fan of your wit and oh, about a lot of things. And we've been planning this for for like a little while. We talked about this several times already. Yeah. I'm glad that we're doing, we're finally doing this. So we said love and relationship. It's not a typical, we have a question and then we'll answer it. But this time, I know there are a lot of 90s kids listening to the pod. So we thought of doing three movie titles that you oh, guys cool, are cool. most probably familiar with. And we will use those movie titles as our prompt to talk about certain topics within the balance of love and relationship. So the first movie title is, He's Not Just That Into You. And I love that movie because the first, I'm not sure if you've seen it. Have you seen that movie? Oh, um, if I'm being honest, uh, I think I did. But from what I can remember though, it's rom-com obviously right starring I, I think there are a lot it's a it's a star studded ensemble i'm guessing we have drew barrymore there right if i'm not mistaken yes, yes there you go yes and they're in, intertwined um uh, or multiple stories within this particular movie now take but i'm guessing that you still remember the plot and let's actually, go ahead and hear i actually to be honest i rewatched it from netflix the other night just oh. to prepare for this episode so the first few scenes of that movie was centered on a girl was crying and when she talked to her mom because someone bullied her and then her mom said you know what the, the, that kid bullied you because he likes you and that's where this whole lie started that when someone is being harsh to you or being mean to you, then that person most probably like you. So, and then it transitioned to a lot of like, why is he not calling me? And why isn't the guy even asking me out? Why hasn't he asked me out yet? So, and then some, and this, this is something that I've also observed in some of my conversations with friends, right? That if I have a friend and he went out a date with someone and then the, the date ended up, oh, okay, let's catch up again sometime. And then he didn't, she didn't hear from the guy. All the other friends, girlfriends would say, oh, maybe he's just busy or maybe he lost your number or maybe he's out of town for work and there's like limited signal. All of, all of these excuses. Or if the guy, um, the other scenario was if the other guy said that, oh, I, I don't think I'm good for you. And then the other ladies will then say that, well, he's probably thinking that you are too good for him or oh, that you are so yes yes or that maybe you're a very strong independent woman for him and he can't take that anymore so all of these like you know like massaging all of these pains that we have especially when a, and i'm talking from a women perspective right when uh -huh. a guy gets a call or a guy breaks up with you and all of these excuses so I want to focus on that because the, that movie was sort of centered on the exception and the rule have this general mindset of when a guy doesn't call you certainly he doesn't want to call you if he doesn't want to ask you out he doesn't want to ask you out he wanna, doesn't want to give you the time and then the, that is the rule the exception is of course when you when you bend that rule so <laughs> Bri what is your take on that Coming from a uh, perspective. Oh, uh, well, first and foremost, I do. I've never heard about this rule. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but second, uh, I want to go back a little bit on the bullying type, uh, okay. bullying part, right? Because it's not always bullying. You know, uh, when you are young, okay, when you're when you're a kid, and then you are now uh, experiencing things that you 
you want to always look at this girl you want to always be um be around her and then eventually you want to be talking and conversing with her but because again you are young you don't really know how to act and uh, that is uh, that's how young boys are going to be expressing themselves that's why ponytails right it's a major no-no when we we'll be way back in uh, in preschool yeah. or kinder right uh, because we that's the only way that we know how to get the attention of a girl we're just, just going to be pulling uh, pulling on the pigtails right mm-hmm. getting yeah. the pencils and just uh, uh, just um uh, being kind of mean because uh, i'm not saying that it's okay right but we don't have any choice we don't have the capacity to be talking with a girl and then uh, they'll be okay with it we don't know how they're going to be reacting okay mm-hmm. so that that's that okay now moving forward um to how a date went right and what's going to be happening after what i've heard is um for us for guys okay not to sound too desperate uh there is a timeline between one to three days okay. so that you, yeah that, that's what i heard um and right now it, you said excuses right you said uh, it could be excuses it could be the truth however again it really depends on the vibe that you had when the date ended Okay. Right. Also, maybe a factor is how old were you? Um, were you both when you know when you went out? Right. Was it high school? Was it already in college? Was it already in the phase that you you both have jobs? Because that's going to be making a major difference. Maybe this uh this guy's thinking I really still want to go ahead and uh, um see this girl, but it, it's uh is is it going to be worth her time? Hmm. Can I right? Maybe something came up from the conversation during the day. Maybe there was an ex that, you know, kind of kind of mm-hmm. came up in the conversation. That's something that we are going to be taking a little bit ser- a little bit personally because okay. it's kind of like you're comparing it already. And although you um, I don't know if you will be, but it's again, it's a nice piece of conversation. But um, uh, it's it, it's now going to be uh it's going to be like you're going uh, you are going to be measuring yourself against this particular guy only basing from the things that you said which obviously are only the good ones if right if if it ended good yeah. but uh, another you know another side of the coin there is if you are bringing up this um uh, this history or what happened because you want to make sure that okay i um I'm, I'm not exactly saying that you don't, uh, that please don't do this, but this is what happened with this guy and we it ended badly. So we have an idea now mm-hmm. that, okay, uh, uh, I'm going to be steering away from that. If, okay. Right? So yeah. it, uh, for me, it's not really a rule. The only rule that I heard is, again, the, the, the one to three days before you contact the girl again. One but it all depends, right? It all depends on the vibe that, uh, or how the vibe ended or how the date ended. Okay, mm, with the okay. vibe and what type of conversation took place. There you go. Okay, really good point, right? But I just want to capture something that you said about oh, you no know, several factors that went in during the date, right? But I want to ask you: Do you guys normally say that? Okay, I'll I'll call you again soon. Let's catch up again soon. But you didn't really mean it. Oh, okay. <laughs> saying, uh, saying. Yes, your- just for the sake, just without- being modest and polite at the end of the date. Right. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'll call you or I give you give you a, his number or a call me or something like that. I mean, it's kind of old mm-hmm. school because now, of course, we have messenger. So you don't have an excuse to yeah. call. But I would probably think that if that man or guy is really interested to have another date, that there should be a follow up. Right. And you mentioned yeah. one to three days. So after one to three days and the girl went on a date, didn't hear from the guy. But did the, but the guy did say that okay let's catch up again soon let's set up you know something again does that mean that that was a blow off oh okay well uh, I cannot really say a hundred percent okay right because it's all on oh how how did the guy right um how um uh, what are the exact tone that was used because the words we can you know we can do just um use it generically right yes. that's what you would always say okay let's catch up soon now the problem. The problem is, was there a date? Like maybe no, uh, no if, specified if date, guy, right? Yeah, guy, I need to specify that date. Are you gonna be available again next weekend? I, yeah. you know, this is the perfect time 
for me. This is my day off, right? Or maybe if it's going to work for you, that's that's one. Uh, okay, or second, maybe she or he will be asking the girl, what's your preference on the next date? We're done with the movie. We're done with the dinner. Maybe you want to do okay. something else. Maybe you want, okay. you want to go bowling or maybe shoot arrows or what have you. I don't know, <laughs> right? So yeah. it's not, yes, that's the polite closing spiel, but it needs to have another conjuncture saying that, okay, this, so, so that you know that it's not only the polite way to end yeah. your uh your day that's only for me but you know i i'm only speaking again based on you know uh based on my perception maybe other guys do not really know <laughs> how uh, how to get another how to get another date because second dates are a big deal in the western right and in, exactly. in western culture because that means that yeah um something clicked and let's go ahead and see what happens yeah. right here in the philippines in, in not really, though, right? Because yeah. most of the time, um, we, we see the people that we are dating in school. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Right? yeah, that's true. That's in true. The, we, we always find these people on the same place as, as we are, maybe at yeah. work or something like that. So it's easy for us. And also, third, third point, it's going to be taking effort from way before. You said that there's Messenger now, yes. right? Mm -hmm. For guys, before, if you don't have a phone, right, you need to go ahead and be creative creative about it. You, 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 you need to have a friend that has a phone at least or, <laughs> or maybe talk to one of the friends of the girl yes. that also has a phone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All which brings me to my realization that phones right now, right, the first thing that you'll be asking when, you, when someone answers the phone, where are you? Okay, very different from the 90s because the only way that you'll be able to talk to someone through the phone is if you know exactly where they are. Oh, one follow-up question, right? And okay. remember I said earlier that we all have, you know, in our conversation, it's not me betraying my my gender, my team, but more of, because we always say that, that, you know, maybe, maybe you lost your number. Maybe you're too independent, too self-well-made. Um, and his probably intimidated by your independence and by your strong personality. So we all make, we all have this excuse when we talk to our girlfriends, when a guy mm -hmm. isn't putting in the effort to either go on a second date or to pursue, right? So I guess mm -hmm. the other question that I would like to touch on is that when a guy is not exerting an effort to see you, to take you out on a date, to do something as an act of service, whatever, does that mean that he's really not interested or he's really not just that into you? Oh, okay. So hence the title, right? So let's bring title. the title. Yeah. Now, again, it's I really cannot, you know, say it 100% though, right? There is, um, a, there is at least 70% of truth to that title, right? That's why he's not exerting effort because that really is the only logical, you know, inference. Like... It, no second date, meaning he is not interested or you are not interested. Now, the reason behind it, okay, we can only speculate. The um, the most common, right, that do, that we like to tell ourselves is that, okay, this guy just thinks that I'm too much of a girl or too much of a guy for, you know, um, um, for this for this partnership. But sometimes that's not really true. Sometimes maybe it's an <clears throat> it's an internal struggle with this guy. Okay, I it. Will I be able to top off the first date? Because I, you already, uh, you, you want the best foot forward on the first date, right? And then you'll just, true. yeah, right? Because you, what you want is to close the deal and have a second date. But the problem is, how are you going to make the second date better? Some guys would uh, would overthink this, that, okay, maybe really? she's, she's talking about these, right? She's talking about these books. Okay. She's talking about this restaurant. She's talking about these movies. I don't have any idea what it is, but I'm, uh, I, I absolutely like her. How can I bridge the gap? And that's where the overthinking and the anxiety comes in. Oh my goodness, am I, am I, you know, am I right for, uh, am I right for her? Am I right for Jessica? Right? She mm -hmm. has a podcast and what have you. That's like a different talks. example. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I, I just want to re refer to real life situations. Okay. <laughs> right. See, see. Um. Right. So, some will be intimidated, and then they'll just go ahead and succumb to the idea that okay, maybe it's just not really gonna work. 
Okay. Right. And then they'll just they'll just move on. But okay, and um, uh, guys that are gonna uh, watching, I'm sorry, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna expose us right now. Okay, there is nothing sexier for us than a girl asking for the second date because guys, really? we are dumb as rocks. We don't really have mo most of us. Okay, we we'll just go along and just uh, thinking that we are not really Still. good enough. Promise, this is true. Mm -hmm. This is true. Okay, mm -hmm. and if they uh, if if they ask us out, man, it's twenty twenty two. Come on, equality, right? Go ahead and ask us. Why? You have a messenger. You have my you have my number. What's what's the problem? Do you want to go on a second date? Right, and then we'll have that confidence back now. All of the overthinking that happened from before, right? all goes out the window and then we're thinking oh right i'm handsome man you did it right the man, <laughs> the man in the mirror did it we okay. have a second date see so yeah that's that's my take that's my take okay well that's <clears throat> that's that's a good point uh right i've never i mean we would i've never really entertained the thought of men being overthinkers especially after first date and men finding a girl sexy if the girl would ask the question, pop the question, let's say a second date. So that is news to me. I, I mean, of course, we, we we live in a society, right? That dictated by society that men should pursue and women should be pursued. But what you're saying is that it's a 2023 20, 20, and, and so... Oh Gen my God! Quality. Did I get the, the year wrong? Okay, I'm so sorry. It's just February, man. I'm still on that phase. I, I still I mean, write the year 2022. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. 2022. Um, all right. So I, I think we've made some really good points on he's just not that into you. There are several topics in that movie, but I would like to touch on that. Uh, mm -hmm. That specific topic about dating a guy and not getting, you know, not being asked for a second date or not getting receiving the effort from the from the from the opposite sex and thinking and making up all of these excuses and you know you know how how we are right we would this is we would analyze every single detail that happened during the first date and we would this is exactly what happened in that movie that that's how they showed it like he said you know he he, he gave me a peck on, on the cheek and said that I had the best time and and that she was rehearsing and you know the entire thing did because the girl the other friend was asking did, did he do that on the at the start of the conversation or at the end because if that matters and I was like think does it really matter whether it was at the beginning or at the end so we do overthink a lot of things especially right, you know, right. we're trying to figure out you guys and so we have all of these snapshots of text messages showing it with our friends analyzing oh, every God. single detail that's how we do it and that's not a yeah. again betraying my my gender <laughs> But now we know, right? But what we do know is <laughs> yeah. you you do have a council of you know of lady friends, mm -hmm. right? That will go ahead and go go to brunch, talk about what happened. Exactly. Okay. And yes. sometimes it is uh, again uh, that uh, that is something that will make us overthink. Well, how is this girl gonna be talking about myself mm -hmm. when it comes now in a circle that she is more most comfortable with? Right in an environment that will be accepting whatever this girl is gonna be saying. Okay, so so there you go. Um, maybe the last uh point that I want to make is not that into you. It's just you know it's it all boils down to effort. Okay, if the if the guy will not be exerting any effort, don't worry about the reason. Right, anything that you're gonna be right, anything that's uh, that you're gonna be saying, anything that you're gonna be doing anything that you're going to be analyzing again will not matter if the guy will not be exerting effort that just means you know just end it move on and just go you know i'll uh, go your merry way <laughs> on your next date i like that you pointed that out because that will be our springboard for our next movie title which is my best friend's wedding and Ooh. yeah we all know okay. how the story ends we all know that the story of my best friend's wedding we have jules right the best friend and we have yeah, Michael and Jules are best friends. And then Jules got this call from Michael saying that we, he he would love to see her, that they need to talk about something. And lo and behold, it was Michael announcing to Jules that he's getting married, that he met someone, a 20-year-old, 
and Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Diaz, Diaz, yeah. Diaz on, oh my god on her 20s oh my god yes absolutely so first a question and this is very controversial I think a lot of people have different opinions on this but is it possible for opposite sex to be friends that um way? it's a yes and a no first yes if the guy or the girl is not attracted okay if there is no attraction at okay. all no right no if just one of them has that's the problem there yeah right that's the problem now uh if i'm if i'm remembering uh the plot correctly there is a thing uh, there's an agreement right that if we if we get to this particular age is it 29 or 30 or 28 right and we're still single then uh we we, I hate we that kind of go agreement. ahead and get yeah it's it's so restricting. You're pigeonholing your options right exactly. there. But yeah, that's well, that's a, a anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> that's a uh, that is another um um a story or part of the story that we, maybe we want to get uh, get back later on. But yeah, there you go. Um, if my significant other will have um will have a best friend that is the opposite, like maybe a guy, right? Mm -hmm. And first um uh, my first instinct. Okay, being a male is to be protective, right? Because I see my partner as this very, very lovely, very attractive, and most probably the same thing, okay, mm -hmm. can be said with other men. That's why jealousy is there. <laughs> that's why it is present, right? Okay. Um, that's why it's always something that will be bearing tension to um uh, to our relationship. It's always there because this is how this is how I see her. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure that maybe 30, 40, or even 50% of other guys will be saying the same. Okay, that's why if if, if you're going to be asking me if there is a best friend, I'm okay with gay best friends probably, right? But yeah. not the but not the whole, you know, bulky kind of guy. And then, and then we're going to be feeling insecure now. A lot of things are going to be coming up. And yeah. it's just, it's just going to be toxic for us. And then it's eventually going to be um, a toxic for the relationship and it's you know it's so um i uh, so i'm i'm guessing i'm gearing away now from the yes or no because I'm, so is, it a yes? is it a yes or is it a no is it possible uh, for opposite sex to be friends okay let me um uh, uh let me correct myself i i 100 percent no there there we go no, no. why yeah. why i'll give right. my share of insight later on but why okay. why do you think it's a no why just uh, just like uh just like that friendship okay would usually there are only two um uh, two ways that it will end or maybe three right. ways right mm -hmm. friendship being over right or it's gonna be blossoming into romance or you just end up being um uh, being strangers again right so knowing that Okay, knowing that and knowing the possibility of that happening, it's a no-no. It's a no-no for me. I don't need uh, that. I'm an overthinker. I am. A, uh, I have not. I have a hundred problems. Ninety-nine of them would probably never happen, but I still think of all of them, right? And I do not need that insecurity. Okay, <laughs> gearing up, gearing up my thoughts, and just having some questions about me. You know. Uh, about, or um, maybe about them, if they're going to be going out, what happened before, what are the real feelings, am I, you know, am I, am I more manly, which goes back to our primitive, right, our, our primitive, our primitive ancestors, because that has always been the case, right, even animals will go ahead and fight it out if mm -hmm. they want to go ahead and meet with a female of their species, yeah. okay, which still is true, even though we now have clothes and we are uh, we can use technology and the internet. So yeah. that's so it's a that no. is that. Okay. That's no, a no. no no for you. Mine is also a no. Probably a yes at the start and then no. That's confusing. But in that movie, so Jules and Michael were have been friends for a really long time and they have never really thought of each other as a potential partner. Up until Jules received that phone call from Michael saying that he's getting he met someone special and he's getting married so that sort of rattled Jules mm, it did it, it did right uh, one I think the reason why um men uh, I mean a guy and a girl cannot be best friends because once either the man or the, the guy or the girl will have you know a partner or there will be the feeling of being territorial 
and the feeling mm -hmm. of okay because event of course automatically when let's say if i am the girl right and i i met someone my attention will then be shifted to the guy that i am dating and so what will happen to my guy best friend then so it's it's a no because i guess the question there when when jules received that news from michael was that do you really have feelings for him or you just hate losing that is the dilemma yeah, that is a dilemma. And and so he, I mean, she thought about it and she thought probably that me, do I really have feelings for Michael or was it really because I I just didn't want to share the attention. I don't want the attention to be shifted to someone else because all the while, I mean, all this time, Michael and I were like really best friends. Now, there is another aspect of that by uh, BI that I want to ask you because there are friends like they call each other that people would call themselves as friends in BFFs, right? But then mm -hmm. you have all of these things that you guys are doing that sort of other people might perceive as you're more than friends. We talked about this earlier. You said if a guy puts in the effort, right, then that means that he is interested. And the question there is where do you draw the line when it's it's friendship or if it's more than friendship? Because that always confuses us women. All right. Okay. Um, first, I think there is no line. There is no line that we yes we just we just put it there for us to uh, probably put a label on it okay because sometimes friends or the label friends will no longer be enough because of what they do right mm -hmm. and you witnessed this when we were in high school right they go um they don't literally go out but they they wait for each other right have yeah. their notebooks in the bag of other girls but it's it, it's nothing for uh I, um I know. I know guy, I have guy friends that does that, right? And um, the thing that I notice is they're just trying to practice how they are going Ouch. to be behaving. Okay, I'm so sorry uh, for the lack of the better term. It's not practicing, right? But maybe it's a dry run. If my girl, um, um, uh, if my girl friend, right? My friend that is a girl, okay, because we're tunneling into a, a misunderstanding there. If, um, if a if my friend that is a girl will absolutely think that, okay, this this is sweet, maybe, all right, first, it's going to work with my actual girlfriend, or maybe I am now padding the, be, uh, you know, um, padding the foundation of what can be, okay, between me and this girl yeah. in the future. So that's, again, super blurry. That's why I'm saying there's no line. It all depends on what's going to be happening in the future. Exactly what happened with Jules and this guy, Michael, right? Mm -hmm. The only time that the girl realized that, okay, I do not want, oh, I'm actually in love with this, um, uh, with Michael is when she is about to lose him, yes. yeah. right? So yeah. that's, the, that's the turning point. If there wasn't another girl, if there wasn't a, another party, mm -hmm. will that, um, you know, will that work? Right? Is it yeah. going to be the same um, interaction? Is it going to be the same reaction? I mean, so it really all depends. So there's no line. It's blurred. It's all about what's going to be happening in the future. But um, uh, I think you're going to be agreeing with me that you know a, a sweet guy friend, okay, is always a potential boyfriend. I of course, when you're friends with the opposite sex, it could either lead to friendship over, or it could be it could go to the next level. But you cannot stay in that situation way too long because if one person develops feelings towards the other, All right. then you're it's going to be a very messy situation. And if the other person won't ask the question, like what you said, label the relationship or DTR, d define the relationship. So, right. so Yeah, I know, um, I know a lot of people uh, that has been a victim of that no label kind of thing and it's it's fun believe me it's 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 fun from it's fun in the beginning right it's always fun when you're receiving fun. this type of attention yeah. right and you're thinking that okay i'm there i'm there we we are there right one more step and we're gonna be you know we're gonna be taking this to the next level and all of a sudden because no one asked right because no no one just realized okay uh, what are what are we trying to do here? I don't want to. I don't want to ask you if you don't want to ask me something. Exactly. Uh, something like that. So it's just a matter again of someone stepping stepping up. If there has to be another place that you would want both of you to be in, 
and that you can you know you can see you and this girl on this particular place and that's going to be different it's there's really no reason uh, for us not to ask or for anyone not to ask again it's 2023 let me press myself <laughs> 2023 Wait, yeah. it's february oh yeah. my god it's february 2023 can you believe it so fast but yeah i absolutely agree with finding clarity I, I guess don't stay in that kind of setup way too long especially if you are in right now i i think that's just a piece of advice i would like to share with anyone who's listening or if you are in that kind of situation go ahead and ask and do not wait for for the other guy to tell you that i'm getting married just so you can start feeling you know yes, oh good <laughs> good gracious <laughs> right that is that's the rom-com you know uh that's the yeah. rom-com uh, heavy hitter <laughs> it, right uh, there's a lot of plots for movies that revolves around someone not really just talking and they're just making assumptions <laughs> of, of what this um other uh, other person is thinking and then they'll end up you know doing things doing stupid thing and walking in the rain <laughs> and then all of a sudden love love was in front of me all along <laughs> We can we can go ahead and skip all of that drama and just go straight okay. to it. Okay, well said. <laughs> so that is part one of our Valentine episode here on the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed our conversation. Catch part two, which we uploaded next week. And this has been your girl, Jessie. Thanks for tuning in to Speaker Creative. <laughs>